Hello, welcome to this video on the Pyronix Enforcer. A nice little wireless panel here. It's quite good for when you buy, need to buy things like permit protection because the sensors are a lot cheaper than Texacom, for example. Uh, I don't really like this panel just because it just looks horrible. <laughs> but it's alright with the uh, additional keypad on. Or if you're just planning to use the uh, the app so that you can hide this away in a cupboard somewhere. So what I've done now is uh, I've just powered up the system and the first thing we need to do is do what's known as a clean start. <laughs> Press any button, we so it nope. See your display looks like this once you power up. Your, your time will probably sit at midnight. And what we need to do is punch in the engineer's code, which is defaulted to four ones. Instantly asks you if you want to set the date and time. Keep pressing no until you see clean start. There we go, it's quite far down the menu, and hit the yes button. I asked you for a clean start code, there's two codes you can use. There's two triple zero, which is for ungraded systems. This, uh, if you're just putting this in your house, this is the easiest option. Or there's a uh, 2020, this is more for engineers, if it needs to meet grade two compliance for insurance. So for this case of this, I'm just gonna punch in two triple zero. <laughs> And it tells me it's been clean started. Press yes and it asks you if you want to clear the wireless data. Just go yes again. Clear the codes, yep. And clear the logs, yep. That is the panel now. Defaulted with everything back to zero. So I press the no button and press A and it'll save the changes you've made. And we'll go back into the engineer's menu then by pressing the four ones. Next, you want to press the date and time, hit yes. Type in your year, yes, your month, yes, and your day, yes. And then ask you for the time, punch in the time. It's not 1401, but never mind. <laughs> I just made up the time. And ask you if you want to adjust. Yeah, it's up to you whether you want to or don't want to. I'm going to leave mine as yes, and I'll go back to the start. Hit no, and your next question is, would you like to control wireless devices? Press yes. Control inputs, yes again. And the first question is, would you like to learn devices? Hit yep, and it'll give you the next available slot, which in this case is 01, because obviously we've just clean started it. Press yes, and it'll start learning. So you go to your first device then, remove your little battery tag if it's new. And you'll see this little button right here. This is the learn button. Press and hold that until all your lights start dancing and let go. And you'll hear the beep. Or if your dog contacts the other side of the building, you'll see the green light come on. And you see it says input learn. So if we press yes to that, it brings us back to the start. Press across and go to the number two, telling you it's available. Hit the yes button, goes into learning mode. And with the PIRs, it's located here. Once again, press and hold till the lights start dancing around. Let go and learn. And just repeat the process. Oh, we've got a problem child here. Oh, let's come to life. I don't know what happened there, but it eventually came back to life. And last time, yes, close to the next available one, yep. And hit your button. Uh, for some reason on these ones I've had to press and let go just to bring it to life and then press and hold it a second time to get to learn. There you go, your inputs are learned. Press yes. And what you want to do is now press no, no again, and keep pressing no until you get back to control inputs, press no again, and it asks you if you want to control bells. Hit the yes button, and yes again to learn devices. Show your next available slot, which in this case is one. Hit the yes. There's our bell, which is attached with the two batteries, leading off to your, your battery, obviously. <laughs> and you see the learn button just above, 
the battery connection, this little black button. And press and hold that. And your lights will start dancing. Let go. And there we go, bell learnt. <clears throat> so that's it. Learn, press yes. No. Don't want to learn devices. Don't want to delete devices. Don't want to control the bells. How many stations? If you're adding any wireless keypads, you do this in this menu here. Same with key fobs. Which brings you back to the start. Press no again, and it brings you to change inputs. Hit the yes button. And instantly get input one, which is obviously zone one, which is our door contact. First device we weren't. Press yes to that. And it'll ask you what you want your zone type to be, which is set to zone two. I'm not going to go through them all. They can be found on page 35 of the uh, installation book, which describes in detail what each one is used for. But the basics then are zero three, which is for panic buttons. Zero uh, six, which is for intruder, meaning you can, if you set off that device, it'll instantly set the alarm off. Zero seven is final exit, such as your front door for your entry exit route. Zero eight is entry route, which means if you went, if you set off that sensor straight away, it'll set the alarm off. But if you go through an entry room first, you can walk through it basically. Uh, zero nine is an entry route, but it changes it to a final exit on uh, a part set. Meaning, for example, you'd have this as your hallway, where your front door would be your normal final exit. This would be your entry route on a full set, but when you come downstairs in the morning, you want the sensor to start the entry timer rather than go off. So you'd set that as type 0 and 9. And you've got type 10, which changes it from a final exit route to an entry route. So basically, if you had the front door set at this, if you walked through your front door on a full set, it would start the entry timer. But if you walked through your front door first on a part set, it'd set the alarm straight off. I'm really going to stick to the basics on this one. So I'm going to leave this one as seven because it's the door contact. Press yes and it asks you what areas you want it. I want this on a full set and a part set. So I'm going to set A and B. Just keep skipping these. If you want to set your door chime, obviously hit one here and it set the chime for the, for the front door. I'll leave that on for now. Whether you want to omit, be able to omit it or not. Let's get it up to you. Yes. Let's keep scrolling through. Don't worry about these. And your next question is, do you want to give it a description? Yes. So ask you what you want to do. Start typing in the word front. And uh, the thing about the Pyronics is you have to press the across hour to switch to the next letter. So don't forget to do that. Front door. You can enter a location there if you want, so you can, or you can put door contact, for example. I'm going to leave that blank for now, just for the purpose of saving time. It will bring you back to the to the start. Press the across button, which will go to input two. Again, hit yes, and ask you what you want this to be. And this is going to be my hallway, so I'm going to set this one as. So I'm going to set this as entry route, but I want it to change to an entry. Sorry, oh, yeah. an entry route, so that I can come through it after I've opened the door, but I want it to be a final exit route when I go to bed so that I can come through and disarm my alarm. So press yes, set my zones as A and B for full set and part set. Yes again, I'm not going to have a chime this time. Keep it in yes till you find the description and we'll call this the hall. Yes, I'm going to leave that blank again and go across to three. Yeah, this time this is going to be a long, so I'm going to say a zero six for intruder. Set on both sets. And give it the name. Oops. Lounge, yep. And the last one is going to be my kitchen. Once again, so as an intruder. Oh, sorry, it's not my kitchen. I'm going to make this one into my landing, but it'll still be the same. But I'm only going to set it for A, not B, because I, I don't want it set on the part set. Oh, 
probably just one landing. And there we go, that's them all programmed. So if we press no now, no again. This tile, it just scroll through to see users and codes. Hit yes. You can have a five digit pin here, I don't want one, so I'm gonna press no. So I'm gonna press yes. I'm not gonna delete fob. Do you want to change the rest code? No. Do you want to change the manager's code? This is the master user's code. Hit yes and set your manager's code. That's uh, two four six eight. Right, your manager's code has to be set um, the uh, in the manager's menu. I've just remembered that. Sorry about that. So you need to log out as the engineer and log back in as the manager. Manager's code is preset to two ones. We can't change that here, but we can change the engineer's code. Change that to 2468 instead, and there you go, it's changed. Um, volume control, if you want to mess around with the volume, system options here. You can mess around with that. Change your display so that it changes what it says in the background. For example, the minute it just says enforcer, we're going to change it to say hello. Yep, that's done. Exit modes, if you, you can use this one if you want to change it from a time, a final exit, which it is now, meaning the alarm won't physically set until you close the door. But you can change that to a timed exit or just a final door. So it, it, final door means that you have to open and close the door physically. Timed final means you can either have a timeout or go for the final exit. And I wouldn't worry about the rest of the settings for now, because you just don't overcomplicate things. Um, that's your system options. You can view your log there. Engineer test here. You can do a walk test. Uh, all mine are in Tampa at the minute, so I'm not going to do it. But if you press yes, select your zone, do a walk test. It brings them all up and as you... Let's just close the Tampa switch a minute. There you go, lounge there. And then... Yeah, and we'll do the front door. And at the end it says test complete. Hit the yes button. Nope. Nope. Siren test. Uh, I can't do this one because the tamper switch needs to be closed. So if I did it, it'd just time out eventually. It's best to do that outside anyway so you don't get deafened. Uh, you press yes normally, but obviously I'm going to press no. You can do a battery load test, which tells you how much this is. Obviously the battery's only just been start plugged in, so it's only reading a 0.10 amp at the minute. The voltage is good. But leave that for a day or two and then test it again, and you should get the actual reading off the battery. And that's, uh, that's it for now. That's all we're going to go through. We can uh, play around with the rest of the... Uh, Settings later, but if you go all the way to the end, you can see it will bring you to exit engineer menu. Alternatively, in the menu, you can press A, which will exit the menu. And the reason it's going off is because obviously all my legs are off because uh, everything's in Tampa basically. Press no to that and go to the back to the start. Obviously, I'm still getting a warning because I'm still in Tampa. But if you if all your lids are shut and whatnot, that light shouldn't be flashing. It should just be this display basically looking like that. <laughs> and that is basically it. Uh, I'm just gonna show you how to change the manager's password as I said I would. So we hit two in. Nope, sorry, press D to enter the menu. Put four twos in. Swap down to I think I might just come past it. Edit users. Add user no change no change manager code yes. Type in your new code. Just give this one uh, one three five seven. Check it right. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Just keep pressing yes. You can give yourself a name if you want. There it goes back to start. Hit, sorry, hit no. No, keep pressing no until you see. Exit manager, press yes. And that'll save them. And that's your manager code changed. 
And that is basically on how you add devices and change the uh, the input types. Uh, there'll be another video coming out shortly on how to add communication devices and set it up with the app and whatnot. And I'll bring out another one later in the month on how to attach a wired belt to the system. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.